screencast, I'm going to talk a little bit about AWS CloudFormation. So AWS CloudFormation is one of the AWS tools that enables you to interact with all the resources of AWS, or if not all, pretty close. Um, I generally don't find that any of the resources I really want to use aren't available. Generally when you think of scripting your infrastructure, you think of maybe Chef or Puppet or, or something to set up the infrastructure on your instance itself. So maybe to install a web server or to install an app container. It, whatever, you, whatever you're trying to install using the generally thought of as infrastructure scripting tools. AWS CloudFormation takes it a step lower than that. It enables you to set up the instance itself, to configure it, to set it up with all the other AWS resources that you want to use that need to interact with that particular AWS resource. Maybe, maybe you want a RDS instance and an EC2 instance and they need to work together. Maybe the EC2 instance is a web server and the RDS instances your, your your database. If you were to use CloudFormation, you're able to configure both of those in the same template file, which is a JSON CloudFormation template. And then when you just you can go to the CloudFormation console or the API or whatever and launch that one template and it will take care of the rest. It will build up those those resources. Once you're done with those resources, rather than figuring out you know your whole cleanup methodology of you know, I need to find my RDS instance that I just created, but I want to make sure it's that one so I don't delete the wrong one. You don't need to worry about that because when you delete a CloudFormation stack, it deletes all the resources associated with that stack. So if it boots up an EC2 instance, it deletes that EC2 instance when it's done. Okay, so that's the general overview of CloudFormation. I'm going to now go into the more or less the internals of a CloudFormation template. We have four key pieces of CloudFormation template. There's a parameter section, a mapping section, a resource section, and output section. The resource section is the does the bulk of the work. It actually boots up the resources and everything. And um, you do configuration. The rest of them, the outputs are for displaying information back to the user. Mappings are for putting together high key value pairs that you may want to use later in the CloudFormation template, and then parameters are for the user to input data. So with parameters, as you see right here, I have my key name, and what I'm putting in is more or less a string, but what happens with this key name is it's referenced down here in the EC2 resource section. And what happens is when the EC2 instance boots up, it will use that key name parameter, find the, the key name, so whatever string I put in, and use that EC2 key. I could do this, I could put in a parameter for pretty much anything and then define it. So if I were to make this key key space, this key space, it would, it would work. So the only, the only key part here is the, the property that uh, called key name that the EC2 instance uses. And this is just one of the attributes of an EC2 instance. If you need more information about what that what that is, just go to the AWS CloudFormation documentation, and that'll give you plenty. Um, that's one of my biggest uh, resources section. If I'm gonna, if I have a problem, I need information. That's where I go. The uh, user guide uh, CloudFormation documentation. Okay. So mappings are, as I said, more or less key value pairs. You can reference a map pass in which, which map you're looking for, so the region map, and then pass in the key that you want. So the AMI, sorry, there's also the, the, the initial, I guess, kind of key. So this would be a key, this, is, this whole thing's a value, and inside is a key value. So the AWS region is what I'm passing in here. So this is the region that I'm booting this stack up from. In this particular screencast, it'll be US East 1, so it's going to evaluate this particular line. Next, uh, inside here, I'm, I'm looking for the AMI. So, this is, I'm basically passing my key AMI is and saying, can you give me my value of this? So, mm -hmm. when I boot this CloudFormation stack, it's going to boot up on AMI, or boot up with AMI 7F418316. If I were to do with this West, it'd be a little different. As I said, the bulk of the CloudFormation template, and this is where your CloudFormation templates get really unique and really big and really powerful, is the resource section. 
And here is where you'd actually boot up your instances. So um, right here I'm referencing my EC2 instance resource. And this is going to be a type of EC2 instance. So this particular name right here, you can name this whatever. I could call this BSJS BSJS BSJ key. Um, and that will work just fine. I would just have to reference BSJ key down here or you know wherever else. But for right now, I'm just going to leave this so it works out. I'm also going to... Okay, so this is where I'm putting in parameters uh, for the cloud formation template to basically configure how I want it to boot up. I'm going to be using the, the key name that I pass in here and then the map based upon whatever region I boot up from. So this could be US East 1 and yeah. So if I had an RDS instance that I wanted to boot up as well, I would create another free source. That calls my RDS instance. And then I would just configure it throughout here. Because I'm not going to do that in the screencast, I'm just going to leave that. Okay, lastly, there's the outputs. So this is the way where you can take, after running the CloudFormation template, it gives you back information based upon what, what got built. So for instance, right here, I'm, I'm requiring the value of the EC2 instance, which comes out to be the instance ID. Next, availability zones. Um, I'm using the get attribute uh, option here, and that's getting the one of the attributes of an EC2 instance, which is availability zone. Go and boot one up, and we'll see we'll see it in action. Okay, I'm gonna call this episode one. So right here, the stack name. This just needs to be unique to your particular AWS account. So, for instance, I don't have an episode one, so that, that should work just fine. I'm next going to click on the provide template URL. So this is where you put in the information of your tam template. I could use sample template, which is what I'm actually, the, the template I was showing is actually one of these AWS's sample templates, but I'm just going to do this to the template URL. If you have a template, generally, for your own configuration, you'd probably be uploading it from your local drive. So I'm going to go here and grab this, this template. This is where I was getting the, the CloudFormation template from, which is just Amazon's uh, website, aws and amazon.com slash confirmation, and then if you click on sample templates, it's the EC2 instance sample template. Okay, so now I'm going to just put in this URL. If you notice here, it's using S3. This is where it's being hosted from. Now, if you're going to do provide template URL, maybe for your own templates, they always have to be in S3. CloudFormation won't be able to boot something up from maybe GitHub or uh, a different HTTP site. It needs to be S3. That's where you can host them. Okay, now I'm going to put BSJ's, BSJ test key. So that's one of the key pairs I have. I'm going to give this a name. So, okay. So now this gives you a little information about what you're about to boot up. I'm going to click continue and it's going to launch my stack. Okay, now my cloud formation template is completed. Let's take a look at it. So as I was mentioning earlier, this is where the information based upon what was booted up is given back to the user. So instance ID, availability zone, etc. Now Yes, this is good for giving back information and using it to go and access your instance, but what I generally use uh, outputs for is in my continuous delivery environment where I'm booting up stacks to for development and maybe production. Um, if I need to have configuration based upon those EC2 stacks or those eight confirmation stacks, I take the outputs and then I use them elsewhere. So I'll take, I'll take the outputs, create uh, key value pairs out of them, and then I'll access those key value pairs later on in my continuous learning pipeline. So that's, that's generally what I use. I use it so I can take the automation from CloudFormation template and take all that stuff that is produced and then access it later on. So I have a completely automated environment uh, set up. Okay, so now that the CloudFormation stack is run. We should see that there's an EC2 instance with the name episode one. There we go. All right, there's episode one, and it works as I expected. So now I've given kind of an overview of what CloudFormation template is run. As I've 
as we've expected. Okay, now that we've gone through pretty much all of CloudFormation, or at least a general overview of CloudFormation, I would suggest that if you want to learn more or potentially try out uh, some of the stacks, I would go look at the AWS CloudFormation User Guide. I found there to be a ton of information here that makes it really easy for you to kind of figure out what you're doing, and they also provide examples, which, which are great for figuring out how everything works. This is one of this particular section that I'm looking at right now is EC2 instances. This is one of the things that we, we built up inside the CloudFormation tab we just went over. We use the key name and then we also use the image ID. But if you see here, here's all of like the options you have for building a CloudFormation template. My ending notes, I would really suggest you check out this CloudFormation documentation and really just play around with stacks. Um, CloudFormation is a great tool. If you want a scripted infrastructure, a really scripted continuous delivery setup, I would really recommend uh, CloudFormation.